Hi, my magical creatures, and welcome back to my channel. So today's stories time is definitely what it looks like in the thumbnail, y'all. Okay, I got some juice. Got it, you know. It's a juicy. I would say, like, you know, it got like a little drip to it. You know what I'm saying? But it was definitely a fun. A, it was definitely an interesting story time. There we go. Um, okay, so let's get into the story time. So this was back, I was like 20 years old. So this was like five years ago. Um, Robin, I had just started transitioning. Um, so I was, it was like during New Year's, like I was at the club with like this girl I used to kick it with. And like, we were just out having a good old time, like hanging out dancing and stuff like that. And all of a sudden this guy comes up to me. I don't even remember his name. I think it started... Oh yeah, I think I remember it. But anyways, we gonna call him Johnny. So Johnny um, approached me or whatever. He said, you know, you look real nice, you know, stuff like that. Y'all, I was 20 years old. I wasn't even supposed to be at that club. Like somehow they let me in. Oh, the guy like the So me and my friend and then like the guy that we was with, like he knew like the bouncer or whatever. So we just snuck into the back. And so that's how we didn't get ID or carded. So basically so like after that happened um what happened after that so we basically got in so then johnny like offered to buy me a drink or whatever so i was say so i'm like no like i'm good you know stuff like that i don't really drink like that like now i'll have a drink here and there but at the time at 20 i was not drinking so um he was like all right so you know we started talking and stuff like that and then they had like these little like it was during like New Year's, I remember. And so like they had like these little photo booths or whatever outside of the club. And so me and him, we took pictures together. It was all really nice. And you know, we talked, whatever, exchanged numbers. So then after that, um, I wanna say, so I think like a couple of weeks went by or whatever. He basically like uh, would like my pictures on Instagram, stuff like that. And then like, he just hit me up and was all like, all right, let's quit playing games. Like, let me take you out on a date. So I was like, all right, that's cool. We could do that. And so what happened after that? So he basically, um, I met him. It was like definitely in Sacramento. I think we went to the uh, Kava bar. Cause I told him, I said, I'm not 21. And he was like, what, how'd you get in? And I was like, it's a long story. So basically I went to the Kava bar and yeah, it was like a nice date or whatever. So like, you know, we, you know had some kava juice and basically what kava is it's basically like this it's like a from a fruit or whatever kava fruit and it tastes whatever like it gets you kind of like relaxed and numb and stuff like that it makes your tongue numb and it makes you like super relaxed and chill i don't know like what it does but basically um yeah uh, you can just go in um i think you have to be i don't know if you have to be 18 to get going i don't know but basically, you don't have to be 21 to try kava. It's not going to get you drunk. So basically, we had that. And then we were just hanging out outside. Oh, and let me describe to you what Johnny looked like. Johnny was tall. Like, he was six foot three, Big old guy. You know, stuff like that. And, you know, we definitely connected. We vibe. He was telling me stuff about, like, his family. Like, what he do. He works at a... Oh, I'm not going to say where he worked at. But, uh... <laughs> Basically, we went outside at the fire pit and then like, you know, he leaned me against him or whatever. And then, you know, we just started talking, you know, stuff like that. So definitely it was an interesting night. Um, so after that happened, I don't know what it was, but like, I think that was when like Amber Rose and like Black China, like all of them, like the stripper movement, I want to say like the stripper industry was like really booming and like talked about and stuff like that. So basically, I was like over here telling him like, yeah, like I thought about being a stripper, like I want to do it because they make heck of money. So like, I want to do it. So basically, he was like, what? He's like, we can go to the strip club right now or whatever. And I was like, all right, let's go. And then so we, so he took me, it was this place called Deja Vu Showgirls or something like that in Sacramento. I went there and so we went in or whatever. And y'all, at the time, like, my ID was, like, an old picture of me, like, back when I was a boy. So, basically, he looked at it. He looked at it, and he was, like, and then, like, didn't say anything, gave me the card. And then, all of a sudden, um, he looked at Johnny, like, what the hell? And so, he looked at Johnny's card, and was, like, 
didn't say anything and I was just like so basically like we go inside and like me and him are sitting in a chair and there's a bunch of strippers like coming up to us like asking us if we wanted like a dance a show like whatever and I'm like no I'm good I'm good and then you know me and Johnny was just like talking and stuff I made you know friends with some of the strippers I was I was talking to them and stuff like that and then all of a sudden I really um I clinged on to this one girl um she was actually at the kava bar you guys so we're gonna call her I'm gonna call her Rachel because she looks like a Rachel and uh, so Rachel basically um was at the kava bar and so we uh you know we didn't say anything to her or anything like that we just saw her there and then next thing you know um when me and Johnny went to the strip club she was at the strip club stripping so basically she's like oh hey guys you know stuff like that and I was like oh hey and then so that's how me and her we started talking and we started vibing and stuff like that um that was my first time ever at like a strip club and that was a full new strip club you guys like you could see like booty chest private areas like you you see it all okay and that was I was not trying to do all that because I had like I didn't have any surgeries on it. I literally was just on hormones okay and I had a wig on and then I had like these little like chicken cutlet looking things in my bra to like push them up and stuff like that so I um, was I gonna say so basically um I was just telling her like yeah like I want to audition here like I just want to like see if I wanted to like you know and it was slow you guys it was dead there was like two guys in there okay and like it was butt naked like dancing on a pole and stuff like that so i was like y'all got me bent like i ain't about to work here so she was just saying it's a slow night whatever so basically um i went to the bathroom you guys so in the bathroom there's the girls locker room it's like connected to the girls bathroom or whatever so basically i seen this one girl she basically i don't know what but like i could see her through the crack in the stall and like she's over here just like she put her butt against like you know like where you dry your hands or whatever in the automatic dryer thing she puts her butt to it and then the thing goes off and then like i don't know why like she was doing that but like i thought that was so nasty and gross and then um what else but yeah rachel me and her started talking i was just telling her like yeah i want to audition like i want to work here whatever and she basically was like okay well um i asked her i was like can i come on stage like i want to like do what i want to do you know what i'm saying so she's like all right yeah let me talk like yeah i'll show you some moves or whatever you know let me talk to the guy so the guy approved it he's like yeah that's fine so we went on stage y'all i was looking cute i didn't take my clothes she took her clothes i didn't take i didn't take nothing off okay so basically she was just showing me how to like dance and stuff like on stage so she was showing me how to like twirl on the pole and then like lift up like legs up and then like <laughs> So like you know i did what i did you know what i'm saying they play some music and then all of a sudden um she was just showing me like you know stripper moves basically on the stage so these two guys were laughing and stuff and this pole you guys was like 80 feet up in the air like that pole is so long like i mean if you drop like i think you will get injured like really bad like it'll break something so basically i didn't climb all the way up but i climbed like halfway up the pole or whatever and the next thing I know, I'm like, ooh, I can't. Like, I was about to, like, do little flips and, like, twirls that you see, like, on there. I couldn't do none of that. I was too scared. I was like, let me, like, slide back down. And then all of a sudden, um, Johnny was over here looking and stuff. And he threw, like, hella money at me and stuff. And it was, like, hella ones. Like, I don't even know how much it was. It was probably, like, $100 worth of ones. I don't even know where he got all that from, really. But there's an ATM in the strip club. So, um, what happened after that? so basically yeah so me and rachel we ended up having like a little bond thing or whatever so um after all that money was thrown up in the air um you know after we got done dancing on stage or whatever she basically was like don't you want your money i was like girl let's split it you know what i'm saying because she was hella nice to me and she showed me some stuff and you know went on her way to like ask the, the owner like hey can she dance on you know stage with me so yeah you know we did you know so we split it or whatever and then all the girls were just looking like dang like i wish i was dancing like i should have been like talking to her and like dancing because like, everybody was just looking at that money like so anyways all of a sudden i look at johnny i was like do you want your money back or whatever and then he was like nah boo that's all you like stuff like that and i was like all right cool and so um what happened oh yeah y'all so when i was dancing on the pole and stuff like that the little uh silicone chicken cutlet little thing that puts you, like you put in your bra to like push your boob up that thing fell out of my bra you guys i was so embarrassed but i was wearing like a tight 
crop top so like you could just see it like halfway hanging out but you could see the print of it and y'all like i was so embarrassed i like hurried up and like got off stage and then like went to the bathroom and fixed myself up but yeah so like johnny was just here for it he was just laughing and you know no one i don't think nobody saw that though like nobody commented i was a little nervous about him and then like not only that too i was wearing a wig y'all so like when i was sitting next to johnny he would like put his hand up or whatever and like try to put his hand through my hair and then i grabbed his hand i was like oh i have extensions in my hair like don't mess up my hair like i didn't even want to tell him it was a wig because then he's gonna be like why is she wearing a wig and then like yeah so but yeah i just want i think i said i like clipped in extensions i don't want you to like mess them up so and he's like all right so you know what i'm saying you gotta be you gotta get slick with it you gotta be quick and slick with it so basically what happened after that um so after the strip club so i went to the bathroom again to go use the bathroom and then i went into the stripper room or whatever into the dressing room and i was just saying about rachel letting her know like oh my god girl like i had so much fun like thank you so much you know for showing me around and then this stupid dumb bitch over here in the corner this big old white girl or whatever oh i'm sorry y'all i don't mean to be racial or whatever but i just wanted to paint y'all a picture of what was going on or whatever she basically looked at me like she was sitting down like whatever like fixing stuff and she basically was just like just me mugging me for no reason i'm like baby like why is you so pressed like why is you worried about me like you mad like the hell like you just mad because a lot of people like me i'm more magnetic than you like girl she's just like I was like, yeah, go sit in your corner and go like stare at the wall or something, because that's why you ain't made no money. So you are broke, and I saw you over here have to do certain certain tricks for coins and stuff. So whatever, I was knocking her, but I was here about to do it too. But um, yeah, I realized like that club was not for me, but um, it was definitely it was fun, a little experience. It was definitely something new, that's for sure. Um, so basically uh we end up going to his house so basically we go to his house i really was not trying to go to his house but he was just like no nah, like just like um i think he needed to get like a jacket or something because it was really cold but he was like do you want to just stop by my house real quick and then like what he said um and we can just like take a walk or something like that i was like yeah that's fine you know whatever so we drive and go to his house um all of a sudden we go inside his house y'all I'm like getting a little nervous because I'm like, oh, he a big guy and like all this stuff. And so basically I was like in a little crop top and it was cold as heck outside. So like he stopped by the house to get me a, like a jacket or something like that. So it was like a little jacket he had. So I put it on and nothing like fit me. So what happened? So after that, me and him, we went walking or whatever. And um, oh yeah. So like when he was in his room, he was in his room for a little minute. I think he was like looking for a jacket for me. But I stood by that door because if anything was wrong, I was about to run up out of the run up out of that house or whatever. But everything was fine, so we just went walking. It was nice, you know. We talked or whatever and walked, and then I was like in these little high heel thigh high boots, y'all. Like my feet was hurting. Um. So after that, like he basically was like at the end of our walk, he was like, "All right, well, I want to let you know I had a good time with you." Like do you want to like just spend the night here and like sleep like I just want to make sure you get home safe like I'm not like that like I'm not trying to like do that with you you know what I'm saying like you're just trying to be smooth and slick with it but I was like nah like nah like I'm good like I'm gonna go home so basically I just told him I was like you know thank you I appreciate that but you know I'm good I'm good to drive and it's not like that I didn't even drink at all that night so like yes I was like no nah, I'm good like he said I want to make sure you don't fall asleep I said I'm wide awake like I'm great so I'll text you once you know when I make it home, but thank you, you know, I had a good time. So yeah, like he over here saying, that's what a lot of guys do. They be trying to say stuff like, oh, you want to spend the night? Like I won't do nothing. And then as soon as you get in their bed, they're going to be trying to like kiss up on you, rub up on you. And then they're going to think you won't change your mind or something. So like, yeah, no, nah, I mean, let's do that. So basically after that, I get in my car, uh, we, I zip off, um, I wonder like what happened after that oh yeah so after that i got home so the next day you know he hit me up he's like saying like hey i want you to come over like i want to see you like stuff like that so i'm like okay like you know i have something to tell you so he was like what and so i said so facetime me or whatever and so i get in my car he facetimes me 
And so I just told him, like, you know, I just want to let you know I had a good time with you. I really like you. I definitely want to see you again. But, you know, there's something you need to know. He was like, what? And then I just told him, I was like, all right. And then I, like, saw people, like, in the background or something like that. And, of course, he didn't have no headphones. I think this was, like, before AirPods, like, Bluetooth headphones came out. So, like, yeah, I said, like, you might want to get up and, like, go somewhere private because I don't want, like, other people to hear. And he was like, okay, like, what's up? And I told him, I basically told him that um, I'm transgender or whatever. And he basically was like, what? He's like, nah, quit playing with me. I was like, I'm telling you the truth. Like, why would I lie about that? And then he said, not prove it. And I'm like, or he said something like, let me see that license or whatever. So I showed him my license. I covered up my address and showed him the picture. And then he was like, damn. But he really thought, y'all, like, I was playing with him. I was like, no, like, I'm not playing with you. Like, I would, like why would I joke about that? Like, no, like, if I'm saying I like you and want to kick it with you, like, I want to tell you, like, the truth, you know? So, you know what? He definitely, you know what? He was really classy about it. He was really classy. He was really nice about it. I did get my feelings hurt, but I didn't let him see on camera, you know? I was just, I feel like I didn't care, like, you know, stuff like that. But basically, I let him know, I, you know, he let me know saying like, you know, I think you're a brave girl. He said, I think you're very courageous. You're brave. You're beautiful. But he said, you know, I'm not into that. You know, that's what he said. And I said, you know, like, I understand, you know, I just, you know, uh, I just want to say like, you know, I'm, I'm glad we did, you know, have a first date. But, you know, I respect what you're saying. And, you know, I'm glad, you know, I put myself out there before things got more, you know, uh, more intimate and stuff like that. And he basically was like, yeah. So basically, I got off the phone with him. I started crying because I got my feelings hurt or whatever. But um, yeah, um, after that, and especially y'all, like I was new to dating too. Like I was new to dating. I was like new, like I had just transitioned. Like I didn't know like that was going to be like the reality, like consistency that was going to happen in my life. So, you know, after that, like I got thicker skin and stuff like that. But yeah, the next day I was like working or whatever and um, I didn't leave out of work until like 10 o'clock at night. And basically I got a missed call from him because my phone was like in the locker at work, at uh, this place I used to work at. And basically, I, you know, I was in my car, I call him back, I FaceTime him back and I'm like, I'm like what, like what do you want? And then he basically was like, oh, you know, I was just, you know, calling and checking up on you, you know, making sure you're okay and you know, stuff like that. And I was like, oh, like, I thought I'm, I'm good. You know, I thought I'm good. I'm doing all right. You know, thank you for calling. You know, I appreciate that. And he was like, all right. But yeah, after that, um, I didn't hear from him anymore after that. And he ended up unfriending me off of, or unfriending, unfollowing me off of Instagram or whatever. But he was definitely, um, that he did that with class, y'all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was very classy about it. He was really nice. And he's a big, intimidating looking man too, y'all. And he's very, you know, you know, thuggish, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I was a little, you know, worried. I was like, I hope he doesn't like flip out and like be all macho, masculine and stuff and try to hurt me, you know? But no, nah, he was actually, a, he's a big teddy bear. That's what he is, is a big teddy bear. So he was really nice, really sweet guy. But um, what was I gonna say? But anyways, y'all, but this is the, my story time. I just, you know, I'm putting the, the story out here. Uh, the moral of the story is for this, is that, um, you know, just sometimes you just gotta live, like obviously be honest and upfront before you go out with them. But at that time, like I wasn't trying to hear all that. I just wanted to do what I wanted to do and thank God I was safe. But um, at the same time too, like you just have to live your life. You know what I'm saying? Like when you meet people, just, don't even have no expectations just enjoy the present you know and if it don't work out it don't work out that's just something god just you know and i'm not trying to be religious or anything i'm just trying to make it to where it makes sense to me and and put like some kind of you know like a like the universe god you know whatever you want to call it you know i just think of it as like you know it just didn't work out but you know like you take these experiences and you, you and you know you kind of learn from them and like you form a perspective and stuff like that um but yeah I just feel like what I took from it is just you know I just enjoy you know being you know getting to know somebody you know stuff like that yeah it didn't work out but you know um just be honest and upfront 
um, before you like go out with them if that you know but at the same time too like if you're really pretty and passable and stuff like that I mean at least like um, you know at least let him like get to know you and stuff like that first but after that once it like like when he wants a kiss or whatever then that's when I'll be like nah like I gotta tell him like nah like next time and then then you tell him but that's just how that's how I would do it like I would literally just go on dates and then um like I would go like on a first date with them and then like I will have them get to know me and stuff like that um and then what well, happened I'll let them get to know me and then I would tell them after the date but I would do it over the phone I never did it in public I never did it in person so um yeah that's how I did it but it's because I had that out like I naturally was possible but for the other women that aren't as possible um I would just be up front before them because I already met him at the club he already knew that I was you know like he didn't know you know what I mean so that's why I felt like I was able to like I felt comfortable enough to go on a date with him without having to tell him that you know what I'm saying so um but yeah just you know live your life you know just enjoy the present just you know don't have any expectations of anyone you know what I'm saying rejection is hard but rejection is redirection so there's some somebody better for you and you know after that date within a few months like, I ended up meeting a really nice guy and he treated me right so you know what I mean so it's just you just gotta just do you and not care and just know that like just just keep working on yourself and then the right guy will just it will just happen when you least expect it uh, um but you know this is all you know for this story time or whatever but um i definitely want to start doing like vlogs like i want to upload like three to four videos a week i don't know if that's something that y'all want to see um but if you know leave like in the comments down below like what videos y'all want to see um because i feel like this is like a trend like this is a transgender like channel you know what i'm saying but like also i want to talk about like tips you know i want to do like muffins i want to do vlogs like daily vlogs and stuff like that like, I don't know, is that stuff like y'all want to see? Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Like, comment, share, and hit the bell notification. I love you guys and stay magical or whatever.